Welcome to our instructional video for our updated 365-day annual timer. We're glad to have you join us. But first, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to be notified of new videos as they come out. We've added a lot of new features and simplified the programming. In this video, we will go over the following. Overview, including the new features. Wiring. Programming. Are you looking for a specific topic? Check the description below this video and click on a timestamp. This video is for the new updated 365-day annual timer. One look at it, and you can easily see some of the differences between the old and new versions. There is a much clearer and brighter display with adjustable contrast. Programming is simpler with only two buttons, and that is done with no jumpers to cut or dip switches. Since the screw terminals are also easily accessible, you don't have to open the case. And there are individual indicator LEDs, one for each relay. And there's more to discover inside. The timer now includes a tandem mode to operate the relays together. The timing can now be set to the second instead of just the minute. Smart backup battery charging is included to avoid overcharging and prolong battery life if you want to use one. And the time date memory is protected by a supercapacitor, so you never have to change its battery. Like the earlier version, the timer still has two Form C relays. There is a first man input and egress input for each relay. And of course, there is passcode protection. Let's look at the exterior. Here are the two LED status indicators, one for each output, a large LED display, a select button, and an enter button. Now, let's look at wiring the timer, starting with a wiring diagram for a fail-secure door strike setup. Let's start by connecting the power supply positive terminal plus a short jumper wire to the timer's positive power input, terminal 1. We'll connect that jumper to the timer's COM port later. Next, we'll connect two wires, one from the power supply's negative terminal, plus one from the door strike's negative terminal to the timer's negative power input, terminal 2. Then, connect the jumper we earlier connected to the timer's positive input, terminal 1, to the timer's COM, terminal 6. Connect the timer's normally open terminal 5 to the door strike's positive terminal. Connect the timer's negative power input, terminal 2, to the door strike's negative terminal. We will then use the system test function to toggle the relay and test the connections. Press the select button until the words system test appear on the display. Press enter to select it. The display will change to R1 off. You can see that the strike is locked. Press enter again to test the relay by toggling it on, which should trigger the strike. You can check the strike and see that it is now open. Press enter again to turn it off and check the strike again. It should be locked. Let's show the wiring diagram for a fail-safe maglock setup. Connect the power supply positive terminal plus a short jumper wire to the timer's positive power input, terminal 1. We'll connect that jumper to the timer's COM port later. Then, connect the jumper we just connected to the timer's positive input, terminal 1, to the timer's COM, Terminal 6. Again, connect two wires, one from the power supply's negative terminal plus one from the maglock's negative terminal to the timer's negative power input, Terminal 2. Connect the timer's negative power input, Terminal 2, to the maglock's negative terminal. Connect the timer's normally closed, Terminal 7, to the maglock's positive terminal. We will then use the system test function to toggle the relay and test the connections. Press the select button until the words system test appear on the display. Press enter to select it. The display will change to R1 off. You can see that the maglock is locked. Press enter again to test the relay by toggling it on, which should trigger the maglock. You can check the maglock and see that it is now released. 
Press Enter again to turn it off and check the maglock. It should be locked. Let's show the wiring diagram for a gate operator setup, also called contact closure. Connect the timer's positive terminal 1 to the power supply's positive. Connect the timer's negative terminal 2 to the power supply's negative. Connect the timer's output common terminal 6 to the gate motor's ground. Connect the timer's normally open output terminal 5 to the gate motor's open. Let's use the system test function to test the connections. Press the select button until the words system test appear on the display. Press enter to select it. The display will change to R1 off. Check the status of the gate motor. Press enter again to test the relay by toggling it on, which should trigger the motor. Press enter again to turn it off and check the gate motor's status. It should be off. Now let's review some basic programming. Since the timer's EEPROM memory stores and protects programming instructions, programming is easier and faster before installation if you know exactly how you want to use it and the functions it will perform. Using a piece of paper, write down the following. Any days that can be block coded. For example, Monday through Friday or Sunday and Monday. All the events you want to program and their duration, up to 99 per relay. Any holidays you wish to override the programmed events, up to 20, and their duration. 1 through 31 days. Do you want to protect it with a PIN code, and if so, what should it be? Four digits, and the factory preset is 0000. In addition, you should Determine which relays will operate the devices that are being controlled. Determine if two relays will be used in tandem. Determine if daylight saving time or standard time will be used. We'll start with setting the date and time, but I will also use this to explain some basic programming conventions, symbols, and icons. Step 1. To set the time and date, press the Select button, labeled SEL, on the timer until the set time appears between two angle brackets on the screen. Note, when programming, the two angle brackets will show you the selected on-screen function or option. Step 2. Press the Enter button to choose this option and see the current date time settings. Step 3. You will note that the year is between the angle brackets, so if you want to change that, Press Enter and repeat until the correct year appears. If you happen to pass it, remember that you can press and hold to make it cycle rapidly. When it gets to 2135, it will automatically return to 2023. Step 4. If correct, press Select to accept the setting and move to the next option. Step 5. Repeat the process for the month, date, hour, minute, and second. Note, the time is shown using the 24-hour military time format. For example, 5.30 a.m. is shown as 05.30, while 5.30 p.m. is shown as 17.30. Step 6. When you have pressed select to confirm the setting for the seconds, the focus will move to the U-turn arrow on the right. This is called the return icon. At this icon, you can either press select to cycle back through the date time settings, maybe to correct an error, or enter to return to the home screen. Now, we're back on the home screen with the correct date and time. As a note, the upper right corner shows the circuit board temperature in Celsius. So, let's set our first event. Press the Select button until Set Events appears between two angle brackets on the screen. Press the Enter button to choose this option and see the current settings. You will see that R1, meaning Relay 1, is between the brackets. Since that's the relay we want to program, press the Select button to move to the next entry. The event number, starting with 01. You could press Enter to change the event number, but we'll leave it there since that's what we want to program. Press Select to accept that and move to the relay operation. There are four relay operation options. Dis, shunt, on. T equals 0, 1, meaning timed, for 1 through 99 seconds, or off. Press Enter to change the relay operation from the default. For this example, we will set it to on. Press Select to accept that option and move to the mode. 
The first mode is weekly. Press enter to switch to other modes, but we will choose weekly. So with that showing, press select to choose it. On the weekly screen, on the second line, you will see a row of seven underlines representing the days of the week from Sunday through Saturday, followed by a time. Press select to move to the first day Sunday and continue pressing select until you reach the first day you desire to select. For this, I will start on Monday. Press enter to choose that day and see an M appear. Press enter again to change it back or select to move to the next day. I want to choose all weekdays, so we'll repeat this for each day. On Saturday, when you press select, you will be taken to the hour setting for the trigger time. Press enter to change the hour, select to move to the minutes, and repeat. When you press select from the minutes location, you will be taken to the return icon. As usual, press select again to cycle through and make changes or enter to return to the home screen. Now, we'll set a second event to turn the relay off. From the home screen, press select until set events appears. Press enter to choose and see current settings. You will again see R1 between the brackets. Press the select button to accept and move to the next entry, which is the event number. Press enter to change the event number, which we will set to 2, so we are now programming a second event for relay 1. Press select to accept that and move to the relay operation. We want to turn the relay off this time, so press enter to change the operation to off. Press select to accept the relay operation. This will take you back to the weekly screen, but with the days times choices below. Press select again to select weekly. As before, press select to move to the first day you want to select, press enter to choose, and repeat for each day of the week. We will choose Monday through Friday as before. Then, set the time you want the relay to turn off for those days as before, pressing enter to change and select to move to the next. As usual, at the return icon, you can press select again to cycle through and make changes or enter to return to the home screen. Let's set a holiday when your events will not trigger. From the home screen, press select until set holiday appears. Press enter to choose and see current settings. You could press enter to change the holiday number. Since this is our first holiday, we will press select and move to month. Press enter to cycle through the months. Press select to accept the month and move to the day. Press enter to change the day if desired. Press select to accept and move to the duration. The default is disabled, allowing you to disable a holiday without deleting it. The duration can be 1 to 31 days, but we'll press enter to change it to 1 day. Now, let's set how your timer handles daylight savings time. The timer adds more automation to daylight savings time, potentially saving you time and hassle, especially if you live in the US, Europe, or a location that follows the same rules. To program for daylight savings time, Press select until set DST appears on the screen. Press enter to choose. Press enter to cycle through the options. The options are as follows. Off keeps your timer on standard time. USA adjusts on the second Sunday in March and the first Sunday in November. EUW is for Western Europe. EUC for Central Europe. And EUE for Eastern Europe. All on the last Sunday in March and the last Sunday in October. On manually enables or disables DST. Press select to choose your option and move to the return icon. From there you can press select again to go back or press enter to return to the home screen. Thanks for watching our instructional wiring and programming guide for the upgraded Enforcer 365-day annual timer from Seek Alarm.